Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil Gore. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Civil Gore Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian, and I'm back uh, saving Tim so he did not does not have to do another solo dismemberment, although he did an excellent job on it, I have to say. <laughs> it was, it's you know, I mean, to hear, see, if I had to do it solo, I think people would, would like just to turn it off midway because i don't have tim's dulcet tones so Tim's just hearing tim's dulcet tones uninterrupted for so long i think is, is a treat for everybody i tell you it's tough when you're the only one talking like i find my voice gets just completely shot talking that long like when we break it up it's not too bad but man when you have to do like 45 minutes straight I was completely done. Yeah, oh, I remember that. that time at the first episode I I did like I think it was like right after I had it was you know I had the had COVID. I think I had I mean because I really didn't get a bad case, so I I think we didn't even miss a show. But I remember I was just struggling like to, with the you know because of the cough. So like I mean I was I was hitting that like mute button about yeah. thirty times <laughs> an episode, and and like it was just like. It was tough to get strong. And it's funny because you hear, like, you know, Robert England, we've uh, just got COVID. I guess he had to cancel his Monster Palooza thing and him talking. It's funny. He's like, it sound, he sounds exactly like if Freddie got COVID because the <laughs> way he was saying, you know, he's like, Hi, hello, boys and girls. But it, like, just that little bit <laughs> off, you know, and it was kind of like, I was like, just like, oh, like, even like all this time, they could have just given Freddie a disease and it could have knocked him out of down on the couch, you know, but, oh, yeah. uh, but we wish him well. He says it's, it's kicking his butt, but he says he'll be back soon. So that's good for him because we can't, uh, can't, we can't be Robert Englandless for very no, long in no. this. I want to see that community. documentary. Um, oh, yeah. They were talking about um, it's on uh, Screenbox, right? Yeah. Yeah. Colors of the Dark was talking about it. They said that um, it's not. Uh, so Freddie focused as you would think that it does a lot into his career before Freddie and it's got a lot of um, cameos from different stars like Tony Todd and others other horror personalities so they said it was definitely well worth watching so I definitely want to check that out um, nice. also I uh, my my chair you guys probably don't know it because I edited it all out of the podcast but my chair squeaks like crazy yeah and like I can't even move. Like when I'm podcasting, I have to like be perfectly still because my stupid chair squeaks so bad. So I finally like WD forty the hell out of it right before we started recording. It actually helped. It's not yeah. perfect, but it so helped a lot. So I'm, I'm I'm feeling really good about recording today with my non squeaky chair. Nice. So. And, and if but if Tim rolls away for and he gets suddenly yes. like seems like he's <laughs> off in the distance, he we know he over WD forty. I might have, might have over sprayed. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. My chair, oh my god, my chair on the podcast is the exact opposite problem. It doesn't squeak, but it rolls so wet. Like Julie, when she set this chair up many years ago, she bought us this computer chair. The the casters on it are so perfect, but like if I like just slightly push back away from the desk, I'm like I look like Haley um, from. Uh, uh, host, I go flying back through like doorways, You're like and... Chevy Chase on the toboggan down the. Oh yeah, it's like Christmas yeah. vacation. It, it's it's like I'm ridiculous, <laughs> or it's like those fidget spinners. You know, one little spin that goes for a half an hour. You know, it, it's like I tell you, these are the best casters like ever done. Uh, right, that's what they call those wheels. Yeah, like, yeah. casters. Yeah, yeah. Fidget right. spinner. Now, now that now that we we uh, started the dismemberment of odd facts and and tales, that's a little behind uh, the scenes yeah. uh, production trivia there for you. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess we should though. get right into it. June's not yes. too bad a month. Uh, it's um, got a mix of good titles and throwaway titles, like like most months, but it's not too packed. Uh, and we're going to start things off with June 6th. We have a couple of movie collections coming up. They're re-releasing that great Chucky 7 oh, movie yeah. collection that Brian and I bought. I uh, highly recommend that one if you don't have it. And they're also releasing an Insidious 4 movie collection uh, if you don't have any of those. So... Check those out. And yeah, I, I have them all like separate, so I I kind of need them uh, as a you know I need a, a I think I just need one more the latest one that's like not even out yet, right? I guess it didn't come out yet. Yeah, that's the only thing I, I'm having reservations about this collection because there's a new one coming out, and then you're going to have four in a set plus this random other one. So I might yeah, wait wait I, till they all come out. I hate when they do that, and I know why they do it. You know, they do it intentionally so someone will grab it and say, oh, let me catch up before the next one. But, yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, if it's at a decent price, uh, okay, because, you know, who knows when they'll ever, if this fifth one bombs, you don't know when you'll get a five, a five pack, but still. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll kick things off with June 6th. The first one up is a release I was really looking forward to, and I watched it recently. That was from Universal Studios' Renfield from this year. Having grown sick and tired of his centuries as Dracula's lackey, Renfield finds a new lease on life and maybe even redemption when he falls for feisty, perennially angry traffic cop Rebecca Quincy. Oh. And this one was good. But Nicolas Cage is amazing. This He's like super creepy. He's like a super creepy vampire, even though this is a comedy. is He's actually kind of scary. I'd, like a, I'd almost like to see him in a serious vampire movie, except I wouldn't be able to take it seriously, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, the only thing I didn't like about the movie is I think the movies, the parts where... It was not like Nicolas Cage or Renfield, um, you know, fighting or doing action stuff uh, or horror stuff. What kind of dragged down like this whole subplot with Aquafina that just, I don't know, it just never went any, anywhere for me. That, that was a part of the movie I didn't like, but the rest of it was amazing. So it, it, it's, um, it was definitely worth watching and I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, it could have been a little better, I think, if they cleaned up that whole subplot thing. Yeah, this is one of those I'm just going to buy, like, sight unseen, because I know I'm going to love it, and I'm oh, yeah, going to yeah. want it in my collection anyway, so. Yeah, you're going to like this one. Uh, no extras on this one, unfortunately, but that's kind of par for the course for these kind of mainstream, uh, yeah. big big studio releases. Yeah. Uh, speaking of not mainstream, I, this this is this is a doozy, this one coming out <laughs> from <laughs> Shout Factory. Private parts, and no, not the Howard Stern one. No. You know, you know Robin, uh, they they... You know, they made a movie earlier about with using my name, Robin. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't do that as good as Matt Friend. I'm sorry. We need to like hire him and like. Uh, Matt, for, nobody for, does Howard. Stern. Matt nobody Friend does, does Howard Stern better than Howard Stern. He does. does. And you ever see when they just go right, right, right? Yeah. They go back and forth. Yeah, Matt Friend can basically do every image. I've never seen anyone that can nail every imitation. Yeah, like perfectly. Like not even. I love the one like when he adds for for Mitch McConnell he just go Scooby Doo Doo. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, why does he? that <laughs> he does that i mean his desantis is so dead on though it cracks me up oh, I, I, yeah so matt friend anyway sorry there's our matt friend plug uh because i botched my uh uh imitation but anyway this private parts from 1972 my birth year so it, i don't think i've ever seen this on the list of my birth year movie so i don't know what's uh we need to look into this one but anyway uh so here here's the the really really uh tight Short synopsis, which, of course, if you know me by now, that's me, me being very sarcastic, and you're going to get a nice long synopsis. Yeah, this <laughs> but one's here we go. doozy. Me, 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 me. Let me check the wind. Okay, now here we go. <laughs> Cheryl fled an unhappy home in Ohio for the sunny skies of California with her best friend in tow. However, wait, 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 wait. Aren't all homes in Ohio unhappy? Lady, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, Ohio people. I'm yeah, just I know. kidding. Well, Chris Rankin probably has a very happy Ohio home. <laughs> I'm picking on Ohio. I'm sorry. Yeah, but and we—that's where Obi was born. Actually, we got Obi. Oh, from Ohio, but, there uh, there's at least but, one, one, uh, one, he, one person or one pup that loves Ohio. Yes, yes. He, he. Uh, well, I don't know if he loved it. He was only there for like eight <laughs> weeks. So, uh, you know, we'll bring him. Maybe we'll bring him back one day. See if he remembers it. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, so he, he fled, she fled, uh, okay, yeah, however, after they have a falling out, Cheryl is left with no place to stay, remembering that her Aunt Martha runs a hotel, that's like a weird fact to suddenly remember. <laughs> can you remember. just, like, can, can you imagine, like, suddenly remembering that your aunt ran a hotel? Yeah, like, why, wouldn't that be always kind of on your mind? <laughs> like, if I knew someone that ran a hotel, like, they would always be on my mind, that would because be I'd always knowledge. take a trip yeah. there, yeah. yeah. But, you know, back in the 70s, maybe a lot of drugs were going on still from the 60s. I don't know. Um, but Cheryl arrives at the King Edward, a decaying residential inn located in one of L.A.'s less desirable neighborhoods, and persuades Martha to give her a room for a few days. <laughs> Some ants. Jesus. Uh, Cheryl soon discovers that King Edward is a home to a wide variety of eccentrics, defrocked priests with muscle men fetishes, falling down alcoholics. Wait, wait, is this a Joe Bob <laughs> I know it's <laughs> defrock priest, muscle man fetishes, <laughs> fetish foo. No, <laughs> uh, falling down alcoholics, senile old women, and a voyeuristic photographer named George. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god, this movie. Uh, Cheryl, uh, why was this not my pick of the week again? Uh, no, uh, Cheryl, who indulges in her own voyeuristic impulses by sneaking into the plane. Uh, sneaking, uh, wait a minute, where heard, oh, here we go, sneak, it's so long, I can't barely, it's so tiny, the font, sneaking into the room of her fellow boarders is attracted to George and enjoys playing dress up as he watches her through the peephole, despite Aunt Martha's warnings not to interact with the other guests. 
But when Cheryl decides to cross the line into physical action with George, she learns his obsessions are more dangerous than she imagined, and that both he and Aunt Martha have some rather surprising secrets. Uh, yeah, the the narrator doesn't this sound like Leslie Nielsen. It does it really a little did. bit? But yeah, this looks really nutty, but like in a good way. Like this, I could see this being real. You know, I have to say, I, I usually tend to like weird movies that are in like like hotel based. Like I think that's why I love so much about the first Puppet Master. You know, mm-hmm. I, li- I like when they're in like a like a, a hotel and, and they interact with weird guests, and it's especially the more decayed the hotel, the better. You know, yeah, that I sounds know, right. Just a big hotel alley. person, yeah. So that's this should be this is a, this is a good fun uh, movie, I think. Uh, it's got a brand new two K restoration from an interpositive, and it's got a new audio commentary with film historian David Delval and filmmaker David Dakota or no, it's Dicato, right? Dicato, Dicato, and. And, and it's funny they teamed up in here because that's actually whole David Decoteau's whole thing. But uh, if you forgot, David Duvall, he looks and sounds like Frankie Avalon, used to do beach exploitation movies in the 60s, still has Shatner hair and wears a deep V-neck to let the Hasselhoff-like chest hair hang out. Still living his best beach blanket bingo life, smooth with the ladies like Richard Dawson from Family Feud. And if you want to see him and see how off our, um, our uh, d- <laughs> description of him is, Full Moon has a bunch of uh, – uh, titles that he ho- does a little hosting to kind of like an Elvira kind of thing going. Um, and David Decoteau, it says he was paired with together with David DelVal because the people of vinegar syndrome accidentally called him first because his name was next to DelVal's in the Rolodex and to avoid embarrassment, they just went with them both on this commentary. So it seems like that happens more than once. Uh, so shout factory still has not updated their Rolodex, I guess for <laughs> many years now, but yeah, so that's a, uh, Oh, there's still two more, fe- a few more features. Uh, new. She's a living doll actor, Ayn Royman on private, parts new frivolous gra- gravitas filmmaker alan arkish on the films of paul bartell still gallery and a theatrical trailer alan arkish sounds funny it's like i feel like that's like what someone you, we would describe that also is kind of similar to alan arkin you know he goes yeah eh, he's a little alan arkish you know I don't, <laughs> but uh, i don't know if that, <laughs> that just may be me <laughs> uh, is, is he sort of like uh, tom salvini that's what you get yes, at the weird I, cons yeah, like the, the the cons that just couldn't get the mainstream the mainstream guests. They get like the uh, the Alan Arkishes and the the Tom Salvinis. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, another Shout Factory. This is the Strangler from 1964. This is one of Shout Factory's kind of bare bones releases. Leo Kroll is a mother fixated lab technician who collects dolls. He is also a serial killer responsible for the strangulation deaths of several nurses. And this one has uh, Victor Buono from. Uh, Whatever happened to Baby Jane, which is like so creepy. The dude's like, I've only seen him in creepy roles. I don't know if he's ever played anything non creepy, but he looks just as creepy in this one. Yeah, he looks like he's cosplaying like Paul Bearer from WWE. Remember the Undertaker's yeah. old LA? You know, <laughs> <"Ooh>, Undertaker! <laughs> He's coming to get you, all, Hogan. You know, yeah, like that's that's what I felt like he was like in this. But oh uh, my gosh, yeah, I know Cody likes that one. She loves when we do like some horrible WWE impersonations. Yeah, yeah, those are great. So that one's for you, Cody. We owe you. <laughs> and that's really it, right? There's no, uh, yeah, there's nothing on there. Nothing on there. Yep. Yeah. Bare bones. Tim got a, Tim got a dud. He got a yeah. quick one. Um. Oh, the next one's our pick of the week. Okay. Uh, this next one, uh, yeah, release number five of the week before our pick of the week uh, is Kino Lorber's The Severing uh, from 2022. It says a cathartic movement film expressing feelings and emotions through a story's movement and text rather than a plot. And that already tells you. So don't they don't watch this and say, well, I really couldn't get the plot. They're flat out telling you there's no plot to this. Uh, capturing emotion and physicality on an experimental and nonlinear narrative level. Um, it Tim wrote seventy minutes of naked art dance, hard path. Yeah, that's what it looks like, really. And it's funny they even say a seventy minute visual gut punch, but to me it looks like a dirty, like unhygienic group of yoga people, you know, that are just doing things. Uh, I, but yet I, I'm mildly intrigued by it. I hate way. to badmouth this movie because I haven't seen it yet, but it just looks so boring. I can't imagine watching seventy minutes of people writhing around in a room. I can't. Yeah, it, I can't do it. It kind of looks like it almost. Rem- it looks like skinnamarink, like like you know if they have a goat yoga. If they had skinnamarink yoga, <laughs> I think that's what this movie would be. Um, Skinnama yoga. It, yeah, Skinnama yoga. It does have uh, some special features. It says behind the scenes still gallery. Which what could that be? Just more pictures of <laughs> creepy yoga people. And it, it's got a trailer, which is which we saw, which is just. I guess if you want 74 minutes of uh, 
<laughs> yeah, the trailer was enough for me. Joke. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, Sacred Reich, Manifest Reality, is a music video for this movie, so it's probably just musical versions of this. Uh, audio commentary by director Mark Pellington, editor Sergio Pinheiro, uh, music composer Peter G. Adams, and choreogra- choreographer Nina McNeely. So she's probably the one that choreographs the yoga. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just. I'm not a dance person. I I completely uh, respect the talent involved and everything involved in like doing interpretive dance and that kind of thing. But it, like, to, it just it bores me to death. I don't. Oh yeah, I don't I, like I mean, watching. That, yeah, and art is art, and that's what I like. You know, you can appreciate it because everyone can find their own artistic. Uh, you know, interpretations of things and yeah. what they like, and so yeah, I'm not knocking it either. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying, I I, I would ha- I think I'd have trouble. I mean, thank God that it's only 70 minutes at least. Yeah. Imagine it said like a two hour gut punch. But not even that. Like I'm not even I'm not a I don't dance. I, I can't dance. I'm not like I don't even like watching people dance. Like it's, it's not a like I don't watch Dancing with the Stars. The dance things on America's Got Talent are like my least favorite things. So, yeah. but you know, everybody has their own thing. There's lots of people. That, that love that kind of stuff. So. But but just remember, Tim, you can dance if you want to, <laughs> and you can leave your friends behind. <laughs> I did take one dance class with Olivia, which was weird because um, it was a I want to say samba dance. I don't wow, look at you, Tim. But uh, yeah, we went just for fun because she had like a free lesson, and uh, but it was weird because you had to like dance like you had to for you had to trade off. So you couldn't just dance with your wife all the time. You had to dance. Oh, with other I think women. you. I remember you telling us this in our group feed that you yeah. had to like go to like the different people, and it was very awkward. It was very awkward. I didn't like that at all. Like it yeah. just felt very weird. Yeah, it's better. They, they, I, I, and I say this to all dance groups like that because whenever they do, you see that on like TV shows all the time. They represent it, and and everyone I've known says a lot of these dance things do that. And it's like people have to understand, you know, dan- for someone that's not a dancer or bad dancer like Tim and I kind of thing, or you know, where it's not our thing, it's bad. And it's it's an accomplishment enough that you got there. Stop giving us further challenges to like go with other people. Where I know it's like an introvert's think. worst nightmare kind of. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, my highlight to a dance class was I took uh, Julie and I took a dance class before our wedding. Um, the uh, I think my parents gave us like a gift uh, gift uh, membership to Arthur Murray thing. So we took like a couple of weeks of dance classes so we can get, uh, you know, for a wedding, we'd have a nice first dance. And uh, I remember Julie, I guess, forgot that who she was marrying, uh, that she's married to the most klutziest person on the planet. So <laughs> we went to um, where we were dancing there. My highlight of the whole thing was I, I, I cracked up the entire uh, dance room because uh, I was Julie and I were doing a, a like a, a sequence and I st- kicked her toe and like basically she started to bleed because she was wearing like a flip-flop kind of open toe shoe thing and i said so she said oh my god she goes, i said no it's okay it's my fault i just what we were on dancing with the scars so i got that <laughs> so that was that was that was my proud pun moment there classic that, that. brian yep yeah I, I thought it was a good one that's know, pretty so good was, actually yeah yeah right on the spot too no less yeah. I, I came up with that one so i thought that was good all right well let's get to our pick of the week this is uh one of those great aero jello sets uh this is the blue edition we've gone through many like there's been a black edition yellow edition red edition white edition this is the blue jello <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> He's, he can't even do his impersonation anymore. go away bill cosby i know you're not welcome he is, on our it podcast kind of it ruined so many people's personation. You know how many times I've had to stop doing imitations of people because they've done something terrible and now I can't like... Well, don't do impersonations of people you don't want to get canceled. I, you're yeah, probably seriously. causing them to get canceled. I, well, I, well, when I started doing it, he was like, he was America's father. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, could you get any like more like her- heralded than that at that point? Oh I, I my gosh. You. We should know anyone that usually has has, has like this dark side of things. Yeah. Where they're... they're 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 so good on like camera like that, but oh well. Anyway, uh, we'll go back to that. To, uh, we'll, we'll get off of him. Yeah, he doesn't need to be uh, <laughs> mentioned anymore. Uh, this one's from 1970 to 72, and it includes uh, let's see, what three movies? The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion, Death Walks on High Heels, and Death Walks at Midnight. Or as Tim wrote on High Hells. Yeah, this is probably, copy paste. Death yeah, walks on they, High Hells. And not when I say Tim wrote, I don't saying Tim made the error. He just copies and pastes, but it's yeah. kind of funny. And I leave the errors gets, in there. Even yeah, if I he see leaves them. the error. The errors add to the comedy. So we're not really that funny. No. <laughs> uh, this one has 2K restorations from the original 35 millimeter camera negatives for uh, 
Lady Above Suspicion and Death Walks on High Heels. Actually, and Death Walks at Midnight. Uh, rigid box packaging. Uh, in case you don't want those loose boxes, you can have a rigid box. With newly designed artwork by Jill's Vranks. That's the weirdest last name. V R A N C K X. In a windowed yeah. Giallo Essentials Collection slipcover. Reversible sleeves for each film featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by the Twins of Evil and Jill- Gills Franks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mitzelblick from uh, Justice uh, Yeah, I, I feel like after, like, midway through his name, like, it's like when they, uh, like, static, you pull the, the cable out of the TV, and it's like, Jill Vrax. <laughs> I love it, though. It's makes. cool. I know. Uh, we need to look up this guy. Oh, our luck, though, we look him up, and he's probably dead now, sadly. Uh, <laughs> which will cause a laughter fit. Which is, yeah. Uh, Do yeah. I dare look him up while you're no, don't. Mexico? If you if you guys don't know what we're referencing, we, we once uh, were making fun <laughs> of a... Poor guy. was a stuntman, I think? Yeah, he was like a stuntman, and uh, he was and a famous, like, supposedly. I don't know. Oh, you're like making fun of the poor guy, then J- Brian's looking him up real time, and he <laughs> finds out we, he died, and that like caused us to just start laughing about it. And was it literally like a couple of weeks prior to or something like, <laughs> like that he, like he just he recently was, died. i wasn't though. laughing that he died i was no, laughing yeah. that he just happened to die like two weeks before we were like making fun of the poor guy like yeah, the whole situation yeah, whole was so tragic for him yeah this, uh, that was not one of our finer moments no uh, <laughs> uh disc one is the forbidden photos of a lady above suspicion i love these names uh audio commentary by kat ellinger author and editor-in-chief of Dia- diabolique magazine Private. One thing, you know, we know she's a film historian, and I know there's a couple other ones that are film historians that don't take the film historian role. Do you think somehow they are purposely like denouncing their film historian title to avoid being mentioned by us? Probably, <laughs> but it doesn't stop us anyway. Oh, it's never going to no. stop us. But. Uh, but but these were these are ones you all know: Tim Lucas, uh, yeah, Cat Ellinger. You know these guys. <laughs> Um, Private Pictures, a documentary featuring interviews with actress Neves Navarro, director Luciano Ercoli, and writer Ernesto Gastaldi. The Forbidden Soundtrack of the Big Three, an appreciation of the music of Forbidden Photos and 70s Italian cult cinema by musician and soundtrack collector Lovely John. <laughs> Tim, now you need, because you're collecting a money, you need a name like that. I was that. about to say, I'm collecting but, soundtracks now. I need a name. I'm a friendly Tim. Friendly Tim, name. the soundtrack yeah. collector. Yeah. Uh, the Forbidden Lady, a Q&A with actress Dagmar Lissander at the 2016 Festival of Fantastic Films, original Italian and English theatrical trailers, and an image gallery. Disc two is Death Walks on High Heels with an audio commentary by film critic Tim Lucas, who you've recognized in the past as a historian. Introduction to the film by screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi from Spain with Love, featurette with director Luciano Arcoli and actress Neves Navarro interviewed at their home in Barcelona. Master of Giallo, screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi on Death Walks on High Heels and how to write a successful giallo. Uh, Death- Actually, that'd be interesting. I'd like to hear that one. That one would be good I, because I'd like to know exactly what they consider that genre of film like we know we know it's usually killer unknown killer usually stabbing um i don't know it'd be neat to, to hear what usually that, like a woman is like scorned and it's yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah but you know that's the thing but I, yeah i that's why i'd love to because actually tim and i you know we, we have we have our own ideas and we always like our you know tim's actually already kind of wrote written some good stuff but like you know we we have some ideas we want to write and i'd be kind of curious to like if we ever decided hey let's make like a, a, a giallo type film like what what kind of you know, thought process goes into it because, you know, it's, I always find that fascinating. You know, Tim and I are always fans of, of the how and the why of a craft, of how people approach the craft. So I think that one actually, that's really like the feature that could almost like sell this entire. And that's somebody set. that's coming straight from the source. Somebody that's right, wrote a screenplay. Yeah. So he's giving us his secrets. An Italian who's written a screenplay, yeah. nonetheless. Um, Death Walks to the Beat, a career spanning interview with High Hills composer Stelvio Cipriani, original Italian and English trailers. It's funny, um, some of these names. Uh, I was reading through that uh, uh, Blood on Black Wax book that I've got that's all about horror soundtracks. And so I was looking up the ones that I have, and you start seeing these names come up over and over, especially with these Italian films. Uh, but Italian uh, horror soundtracks are just amazing. I love them. I, I, will, oh, buy, yeah. I will buy any of those all day long. Do you have The Exorcist yet? Which is, the, of course, the most famous one, really, because that was like started the whole trend of... Uh... Being able to pub, you know, publicly uh, release like those kind of soundtracks. Yeah, I don't have the Exorcist. I do have Exorcist Two, The Heretic, which is a, a soundtrack by um, uh, Ennio Morricone. So that's a uh, that's a really good one. But there's a lot of horse whip in it. A lot of horse whip. Really? It's a soundtrack with a lot of horse whip. Hmm. Like if you need, does it have tubular bells on it? Also, just no, 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 no. no. Okay. It's it's all just it's a lot of horse whip. 
<laughs> but it's a good score. It's a good score. It's but, like, you know what this needs? I got a fever. <laughs> I need more horse whip. <laughs> uh, poor, like, Ennio was really, uh, he was really into his horse whip phase at that point. Cause, uh, yeah. I call it a horse whip. I don't know what you call it. It sounds, it doesn't sound like an Indiana Jones whip. It sounds like a horse whip. Yeah. Speaking um, of Indiana Jones, I'm very excited that's coming out. And now that the Disney Plus has got them, I was, it's funny. I was actually had a, because we don't have uh, cable where we're staying right now. Um, the, at least the cable we had, you know, everything's we have streaming anyway. So we got more than enough channels and stuff to watch. But so sometimes I'll find myself just watching Pluto, you know, and I go through and they had on um, some channels like Action Channel. And they had like a whole Indiana Jones marathon. So I just put on uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark last night. And it's, it's like one of those movies I could just put on at any time and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> so any of those think movies. of it when you said when you said Indiana Jones whip. <laughs> Uh, disc three, Death Walks at Midnight, audio commentary by film critic Tim Lucas, introduction to the film by screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi, extended TV version of the feature. Crime Does Pay, screenwriter Gastaldi reflects on his career in the crime film writing business, including a look at Death Walks at Midnight. This guy's just killing it on the extras here. He These is. These are cool. Seriously. Uh, Desperately Seeking Susan, a visual essay by Michael McKenzie. So that wraps up June 6th. I'll recap real quick. We had Renfield, Private Parts from 1972. The Strangler from 1964, The Severing from 2022, and our pick of the week, Arrow's release of Giallo Essentials Blue box set. Yes. All right. Oh, wait, I'm way off here. Okay, my, my whole thing scrolled to the wrong way. I was like going to start midway in the next episode. Uh, yeah, June um, 13th is our big, or well, actually we have two big weeks. Yeah, June and two th- small weeks. <laughs> yeah, and two small weeks. June 13th is a pretty big week here, but not, not big on the extras, just kind of big on the movies. Yeah, so I'll let you take the first one, right? Okay, uh, this is one that you saw too recently, um, right? I believe. Yes, I did see this one recently. I talked about yeah. it on last episode. Yeah. Before. Okay, I thought it sounded familiar. Okay, yeah, Sony Pictures, uh, the Pope Exorcist, the Pope's Exorcist, uh, twenty twenty three. Uh, of course, that is um, uh, just yeah. This is what well, this just came out in the theaters. I feel like recently. Right? Yeah, this was one fairly of quick recent. Ones, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, portrayal of a real life figure, Father Gabriel Amorth, a priest who acted as chief exorcist of the Vatican and who performed more than 100,000 exorcisms in his lifetime. He passed away in 2016 at the age of 91. I'm glad they told us that so we didn't say anything about him. <laughs> uh, Amorth wrote two memoirs, an exorcist tells a story and an exorcist more stories and details his experience battling Satan and demons that had clutched people in their evil. That seems a weird description for the movie. It's though it kind of almost like sounds like it's a description of just the guy but um anyway you said this was pretty good right tim you like it's this? it's okay it's very generic i mean it's very it's like any other exorcist movie you've ever seen it's kind of mm. but i but i did really like russell crowe's portrayal of uh father amorth so it's worth watching for russell crowe you know what no one has, has created yet and i'm gonna give this a title away because i don't want to make this but i just thought it'd be funny to watch imagine someone made a movie called the exorcist and spelled c-y-s-t it's about a someone's like bulbous boil that becomes and can cure demons that sounds like and a tubi trap it does doesn't it I'm, i would but, be surprised somebody hasn't made that yet but i know i'm gonna look in there um next up from full moon a series i just started subspecies five oh, did you you started that because i want to like i wrote how i wanted to start it yeah i start. i watched subspecies. I think i've seen the first one many years ago but like i never really and it's all on full moon so that's yeah, just another it's, great it was, thing it, i really liked it it was pretty good so it's, you know subspecies is like full moon's take on vampires yeah uh this one's called subspecies five blood rise which is like at gener- least they didn't go bloodlines I know, it's most <laughs> like everywhere time. else uh, stolen yeah. by crusaders on the night of his birth, he has no knowledge of his bloodline. His mother is a demon. His father is a vampire. Trained and exploited by a brotherhood of mystic monks to slay all enemies of the church, fate brings him back one night to the castle of his father, armed with the monster-slaying Sword of Laertes, to destroy the vampire Vladislas and reclaim a holy relic, the Bloodstone. The events of that night turn Radu from a noble man into a vampire with no master, setting him on a centuries-long quest for sustenance and companionship for the treacherous one who stole him from the sun and for the bloodstone he hopes will bring him peace. Spanning 500 years in the life of the vampire Radu Vladislas, this long-anticipated prequel to the subspecies series chronicles oh, Radu's dude. descent from a noble warrior for the church to a depraved creature of the night. Oh, I didn't know this was a prequel. But I've heard yeah, this, I've heard this one was really good. Yeah, and I have to say that, though, you know, and this is not a knock on Full Moon. I mean, you know, because they come out with a lot of, like, very low budgety but, like, just great, fun movies to watch. That's, like, their shtick. This one looks like a really high production value. This The, the trailer on this looked like, you know, and, and I don't mean it's like, it's like they make crap or anything, but, you know, it's like this looks like a, almost like could be a big theatrical release. It was so, – the quality was really good. Yeah. I mean, they, they, 
Full Moon's typically low budget, but it's like super entertaining low budget. Yeah, like and like we've said, we always sing their praises because you know what? They know what they are and they know their audience and they just keep going. They don't. Stop. Well, they're they're they like just, trauma. Like they're j- yeah. just like trauma. Like you know what you're getting when you get into it, and they do what they do very well. They stay yeah. in their lane super well. So, and uh, they and uh, like trauma, they have their own streaming service. Yes, <laughs> so they, it's great. You can catch everything of them. And they, by the way, they if for another reason you want a little bonus for um to to get the full moon features, they added a uh, blood harvest, which is one of our favorites. You know. Oh yeah. You know that, and when Joe Bob did that one too, it was great. That's just a just an. I'm so glad I owned that that movie in my collection, even though it seems movie. to keep appearing on there. You know, marvelous Mervo <laughs> at your service, marvelous Mervo. Oh, that's my name. Okay, yeah, I can always, that that's a very catchy tune. Tiny Tim is hilarious in it. The funniest thing is like Joe Bob even touched on the fact that that Itona Salchuk, the, the the lead of that movie, just looked like. I mean, she was not the best of actresses, but um, you figure she just have a, some sort of crazy literally disappeared off the planet yes. after that movie you can't even find anything about her existence she probably changed her name moved out i mean uh, you know i would put that episode of joe bob as like like if somebody said i've never watched a joe bob episode like i would put that one high up there like it was a perfect yeah. movie for him yeah and you know why because it's like it gives him full of facts it's he's got the comedy element to it but he's also has like a ton of different like um you know like comments on it and it's a good like tweet along movie it's got yeah it's like the literally the the perfect mix for a Joe Bob movie. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of lore and everything. Um, uh, the next one is by Unearthed Filmed, and that's The Sound of Summer from 2022. It says, In the relentless heat of the grueling summer, temperatures soar to blistering levels as cicadas emerge to sing their ear-shattering song. Months of continued exposure is enough to make anyone start to feel a little off. Anyone, that is, except the that oddity that the locals call the cicada man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one. Uh, who is the strange man, and why is he always walking around with a box full of live cicadas? More important, what does he do with them? As the heat starts to get out, our heroine and her sanity depletes. Real life and delusional begin. Oh, sorry, real life and delusion begin to mix. Her darkest nightmares seep into our world, and she fears the cicada man has planted his swarm of insects inside her. She must get them out at all costs. Thus begins her downward spiral into extreme paranoia and self-mutilation. She just needs to make it through the summer. So, um, yeah, this one looks really cool. It is low budgety, but looks like a really cool idea. And I, 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 I'm all for any time there's a lore of like a person, like like the Cicada Man, you know, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and it's got some really good effects for the low budget. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it looks, you know, and it's um. It's, I think it's uh, this one comes out of Japan. It looks like because it says that they had a Japanese premiere. So that you know any of the, the overseas movies are just always so good. I, yeah. I, you know it's like I wish I don't understand why like they can manage to hit like such amazing like topics in movies and do it so well. And here it's like you know it's I, I guess the Hollywood thing. You know it's like they try and please the masses. So, yeah, it's always commercialized. Yeah. Um. um that's why we like indie films so much. Um, uh, then it does have a couple special features as behind the scenes of The Sound of Summer and Tokyo Talk Show with the creators of The Sound of Summer, loud and legendary director Shozen Fuki or Fukui. Fukui. Yeah. Sorry, right. I missed the the, uh, the U there. Uh, release number four this week is MVD Visuals Witch Trap from 1989. This is a classic. Uh, parapsychologists try to make an inn haunted by an evil witch's ghost safe for guests. Uh, I saw this one. I think. Uh, during one of our horror movie challenges, like one, maybe one of the first ones we did uh, a, little, a little while back. Yeah, I kind of remember you um, wa- talking about it after you'd watch it. And I used to watch this on cable a lot. I, so, believe, yeah. I, I believe it's one of those that I probably rented one time when I was younger and yeah. just kind of forgot about it. But I rewatched it you know, a few years ago. It's, it's definitely a classic. Uh, it has some extras here. Previously restored in 2K from an interpositive in 2016. New Magnum Entertainment R-rated VHS version. A group commentary track with director Kevin Tenney, producer Dan Duncan, cinematographer Tom Jewett, and actor Hal Havens. Interview with director Kevin Tenney. Interview with actress Linnea Quigley. Interview with cinematographer Tom Jewett. Interview with special effects supervisor Tassilo Bauer. Photo gallery, original trailer, reversible cover art- artwork, collectible mini poster, and a limited edition slipcover first pressing only. Yeah, MV- MVD visuals are coming out with some good stuff there. Yeah. Um, next one is my pick of the week, so we'll skip that and then go to Dark Force Entertainment. I think they might be a new one, possibly. We might have one yeah. or so with them. This is a double feature, Bog 
and Mako, The Jaws of Death, uh, 76 to 79. Um, Bog, I remember seeing um, years ago. Um, I remember always the commercials for it, for fu- funny enough. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so basically it's a two-pack. includes Bog and Mako, The Jaws of Death. And uh, Jaws of Death kind of basically looks like Jaws if you ordered it from Wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it looks like a fun one. And Tim wrote, National Geographic presents a shark documentary randomly interrupted by R. <laughs> That's what it, it looks like all stock footage Yeah, from National Geographic. But Yeah, it looks very – yeah, because they say, like, no one, no cages. No one has ever filmed this kind of film before. I'm like, yeah, because you probably stole it. So That's why no one – Yeah, did. exactly. Um, but uh, this says something, though, that uh, J- uh, Joe Bob would appreciate, and that features a drive-in mode uh, for the full nostalgic drive-in experience. So that means – I remember they used to have those drive-in discs that came out on DVD when DVD was getting really popular. And I have a few still where it was like that, where it just take a couple of, like, cheesy – those old drive-in movies you'd see, and they'd play – it was like a four-hour continuous thing where they'd have the little, like, dancing candies mm-hmm. and the snack or so and, like, some re- like, cool commercials and trailers and stuff like that. And – uh I think, and it was a series that only I think lasted one or two discs, and then they just kind of stopped. I guess they didn't sell past me buying them, but uh, but yeah, this, those those are kind of fun. I love those. Cause that's like that one thing I bought. Uh, the didn't I buy some kind of like all night thing? Yeah, or something? it was like a an eight hour. Like that would thing. that would actually get me to buy this. Like that yeah, that like feature. I want to buy. It. Yeah, that that yeah. would be that'd be cool to like throw this on and just have that whole experience. I think that'd be neat. Yeah, like Bog is, and Bog was actually, from what I remember, like somewhat enjoyable when I watched back then. I don't know, I always kind of remember like seeing it, but. Hmm. Uh, that, that might be one I'll have to look at, uh, yeah, depending on the price. Uh, next up is from Mon the Macabre, uh, <laughs> The Witch's Mountain from 1973, uh, not to be confused with Return to Witch Mountain. Yes. Uh, the Disney. Which comes up every time I search this to try and get the trailer, yeah. <laughs> by the way. Uh, a photojournalist traveling through the Pyrenees on assignment with a beautiful writer stays overnight at an ancient Spanish castle only to hear that the adjoining mountain is, a co- is occupied by a coven of witches. Don't you hate uh, when that happens? This one looks kind of awesome. I kind yeah, of like does, this one. Um, it looks visually creepy. I couldn't find anything uh an English trailer, so I don't really know what they were saying past a few words, but... Visually, this looks very visually stun, kind of stunning for, for yeah seventy three maybe. Uh, two interviews with actor John Jaff- Jafari. One explores the films he made in Europe and the U.S. The second interview looks at his extensive body of work in Iranian and Turkish cinema. A documentary about the making of the film. An audio commentary from David Flint. Visual essay about Patty Shepard from Chris O'Neill. Trailer and newly commissioned cover art from Justin Coffee. I love that. I love that guy's name, Justin Coffee. I know Justin Coffee, and so many times when you know it's like you know when uh, you get your coffee just in time. So that's good. But, um, <laughs> all right, <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, we'll go right to my pick of the week. And then speaking of terrible, pick of the week. Oh. Yeah. Oh, but this one. But I want to see it so bad. I do too. Uh, this is another Mundo Macabro, and that's Doctor Caligari from 1989. It says a sexually deranged, as it is stylistically unhinged, the psychedelic surreal, bleh, surrealist neo noir reworking of the 1920 German expressionist classic features Laura Albert as Mrs. Van Houten, a woman whose libido is dangerously out of control. There's only one place for her the Caligari Insane Asylum. And yeah, there, <laughs> this movie is so bizarro. And it's like three minutes of just wacky <laughs> things. But there's one line where this kind of guy goes, I'm a juice dog. I'm twitching ski ball. And you won't let me shiver. <laughs> and so just for that alone, I need to purchase this movie. Yeah, it's it's, it's like like giant tongues licking people. And it's yeah, very, very I, strange. Yeah, this looks like one that I think we need to do a Civil Gore commentary. Oh, I so think totally. This one would be, but I think we need to get like a cut. Like we'll get, we need to get like Jeff Whitmire involved and our usual you know, Ken. This needs to be like a full uh, watch party. and Emily. Yeah, 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 this has got to be like a, a whole group effort, I think, to watch this all together because I think this would be just. I think we'd be probably laughing nonstop. But um, but it's it's mostly it's been a, like a cult classic. Uh, it's got a f- new 4K restoration of this film. Audio kind of with writer director Stephen Syadian. Uh, it's got interview with Stephen Syadian. Interview with Madeline Raynal, who plays the. Uh, the the titled role, Dr. Caligari. Interview with Laura Albert. Interview with Jerry Stahl, who is a co-writer. Original theatrical trailer and isolated music and effects track. Nice. I want to see it just because why that guy is a uh, a juice dog and a twitching ski ball. <laughs> yeah, I need to know. I need to know. Yeah, it looks know very that. strange. If there's anything I need to find out about that movie, that's it. Uh, my pick of the week was from Dark Force Entertainment. And it is Scream 4K, but it's not the Scream you're thinking of. This one's from 1981. I had never heard of this movie. 
Uh, a group of friends on a rafting trip down a river stop in at an old ghost town to spend the night. Soon their rafts disappear, and then they begin to be eliminated one by one by a mysterious killer. This one looks like uh, one of the many Friday the 13th slasher clones that came out around this time period, but uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, Ironically, that's funny that it's named Scream then, because Scream was like the ultimate slasher kind of yeah. like kind of series so. uh this one uh has an audio commentary with executive producer director writer byron quisenberry moderated by <laughs> moderated by mark edward Hewick and william olson yeah, quisenberries are very rare they're, they're a little tart <laughs> the snozberries taste like snozberries uh anyway so yeah that was uh, my pick of the week so to round things up for june 13th we had the pope's exorcist from this year subspecies five blood rise which is the new one from full moon the sound of summer from 2022 witch trap from 1989 a bog mako the jaws of death double feature from 76 to 79 the witch's mountain from 1973 brian's pick of the week the weirdly uh, sexual Dr. Caligari from 1989. And my- you had to say my pick of the week was <laughs> uh, prefaced with that. Yes, I had to. Uh, <laughs> That's why you have a partner for a podcast so they can, they can set you up for, for embarrassing moments. Yeah. And, uh, I, hey, it's your pick of the week. I didn't pick it. It is. It is. I, I'm owning it. I'm owning uh, it. And then my pick of the week, Scream 4K from 1981. Not to be confused with the uh, Scream you all know and love. All right, moving right along. You might be find this one you might all know and love, too. Yeah. We don't know. Looks good, though. Looks fine. Uh, June 20th is our very short week. Only two releases. And boy, could they not be any more different. I know. Could they be literally polar opposites? I'm gonna give you, I'll give you the pick of the week so you don't have to deal with this one. Uh, kind of oh, make up for my, I, yeah. my jab. Yeah, see, well, that's, see, that's why Tim is good. Yeah. He embarrassed me there, but now he gets to embarrass himself yes. with reading this one. Oh, man. Okay, so this is uh, our first release from June 20th is Media Blasters. Zombie Ass, Toilet of the Dead, from 2011. Uh, a group of teenagers go camping in the woods where they find themselves in deep trouble when poop-covered zombies that are controlled by parasites come out to attack them. Uh, this looks like a Japanese movie, I think. Um, I think so, yeah. I've, uh, seen it, like, I've seen it like clips of it in like other little horror documentaries or something. Or yeah. some, something I saw a clip for it in something once. I'm like, what on earth is this? I don't know. But so th- <laughs> and now there it's back you go. There you glory. go. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, that is not our pick of the week. No, uh, not our pick of the week. Not, not that like it really took much to top this, but it does look like a weird thing. But like I'd probably watch it if it. If Tim said it's like a Tubi trap. If it was on Tubi, I'd probably watch it. Yeah. And Tim would probably assign it to me. And actually, we forgot to do our Tubi traps. If it, we just totally came back from the, our from our big break and have skipped the Tubi trap. I know you're right. We've got to get back on that. But I probably, you know, we'll probably take a break for it because we have the summer slication coming up anyway. So after the summer slication, we'll get back to the two B traps. It's going to fall thing anyway, you know. Yeah, when yeah. Once you get to the two B trap. So uh, my uh, and Tim's pick of the week uh, was unanimous. Oh, we should say there was an Insidious 4K uh, steelbook. Oh uh, yeah, go with to go with our yeah, to go with our Insidious hype train. Yeah. Um, but this one is release number one uh, for our week, really. But it was also our pick of the week, and it was RLJ's Entertainment, of course, Shutter's group, and that is Skinamarink uh, from 2022. Uh, for those who have not been anywhere reading all the horror uh, up and coming films here, this was talked about a lot when it came out. Uh, and then when Shutter released it, it got even more play. Uh, but the topic is two children wake up in the middle of the night to find their father is missing, and all the windows and doors in their home have vanished. Uh, this is a mixed one. I definitely want to get it, and now I want to get even more because of this one special feature that it has on there. An audio commentary with director, writer, editor Kyle Edward Ball and cinematographer Jamie McRae. Uh, because this one is a whole visual fest. There's hardly like any dialogue, and the dialogue there, you can hardly understand it. Very artistic, very bizarre. So I'd love to hear the director's commentary on it. Maybe he'll give a little bit of enlightening. Yes. Uh, I don't think I've ever wanted to hear a commentary more for a movie right? than, I mean, than this one because I have so many questions about it. Yeah. So. And we've discussed it on the show. We had a lengthy, like it was in our first chapter, yeah. we had a lengthy discussion on this one um, where this is one of those ones where I think it's either for you or you're not going to like it. Uh, Very it's, polarizing, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to, to really like. It's, it's a I, movie. I can't even recommend it because I don't know how I'd recommend it to somebody without. It's a, it's a movie that really the horror comes from yourself watching it. Like it's it's right. it's a mood, and if you you're either going to get that mood and be terrified, or you're not going to get it, and it's going to be horrible. So I, I don't know how to explain to people. And I think this is one of those movies. Like, and this is how I did it. I think you did too, Brian. You have to watch this alone in the dark 
yes. headphones, the whole thing. Like you have to be all in on this movie. No, yeah, this no, is- not being on your phone or like it's one of those that you yeah. it really relies on that whole experience. Yeah, this is and this is not one to say. Oh, hey, let's go watch Kinemarink and then watch it with somebody because no, you, 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 it like it's a very like one of these ones where it's almost like your own personal film and yeah. you'll get get what you bring to it. It's almost like remember like the, the cave in Empire Strikes Back. What, what's it? What's in there? Oh, hey, what you bring with you? You know, it's <laughs> exactly. like that. You know, it's like would you would your you know, like Tim said it though. It's your own fears like seem to come out of this. So it really it's, is. It's very very interesting, but it's definitely one I want to own in my collection. Um, I like to own all the Shutter yeah. uh, ones anyway. And like I said, this commentary alone is worth the purchase probably for people that have watched it and want to know more. Um, it also does have the original trailer on it, which the trailer was very weird anyway. Yeah. It didn't really give much away. But uh, yeah, so that's it this week, really. Yeah. Uh, it's Zombie Ass, Toilet of the Dead, and Skin of a Rink. <laughs> Take your bit. <laughs> Two completely opposite ends of the movie spectrum there for you. Well, our last week of June is packed. This has 10 releases in it. And the first one up is from Warner Brothers, which is Evil Dead Rise 4K, which I'm very excited to see. Yes, uh, in the same here. fifth Evil Dead film, a road weary Beth pays an overdue visit to her older sister Ellie, who is raising three kids on her own in a cramped LA apartment. The sister's reunion is cut short by the discovery of a mysterious book deep in the bowels of Ellie's building, giving rise to flesh possessing demons and thrusting Beth into a primal battle for survival as she is faced with the most nightmarish version of motherhood imaginable. Uh, no extras on this one, but I definitely want to see this. Oh, yeah, I, this is a, a no brainer. Everyone I've heard has loved it. Um, and shame that Tim and I, out of our group, have been the only ones that didn't see it yet. Yeah. But uh, just it's it's hard hard for us to get to the cinemas these days. Uh, busy with me, I barely had time to do the podcast, uh, as <laughs> you know. But uh, this will definitely be. A, I mean, I own all the other Evil Dead, so there's no reason why I would not get this one. Definitely looking forward to this. Uh, next one is uh, it's funny because this one could have easily been a pick of the week, except Tim and I kind of agreed, both of us. We have so many versions of this already. Like, how can we, in good faith, pick it? Even <laughs> though it's one of our favorite movies of all time. But if you don't own it, this should be your pick of the week. Um, it's Shout Factories and it's Creep Show, in the original from 1982 in 4K. Uh, and it's got a ton of great features. Most of them, I think, are on the other versions. But still, like I said, if you don't own it. Yeah, I'm not going to double dip on this one because the extras are all on the previous release. Yeah. Um, but if you just need the 4K restoration, that's all you'd be buying here. But it's, Yeah, literally, that's that's yeah. your only uh, upgrade. I mean, which is a good thing if you want it. But like I said, if you don't have it, this is your time. Uh, brand, it's Like Tim said, uh, it's got the brand new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative. Uh, audio commentary with director George A. Romero and special effects uh, creator Tom Savini. And the 2K version does have Salvini. Yes. So the 4K, you get the real Tom Savini. No, it's just kidding. Uh, it's got an audio commentary with director of photography, Michael Gornick. Audio commentary with composer, first assistant director, John Harrison. And construction coordinator, Ed Fountain. Oh, if only he was a film historian. Uh, three coins and a fountain. No, okay. Okay. Anybody? 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 Yeah, Neil Tim Page has had, one. Neil Page has yeah, one. <laughs> Tim and I had to put anytime there's a moment to mention that movie, we will mention it. You know, uh, <laughs> look at how he derailed us. That Ed found uh, Terror and the Three Rivers, a round table. To, oh, look who's getting into the round oh, table. Oh, yeah. Game. Somebody else yeah. getting into the round table. You saw yeah. how popular it was. I know. Uh, discussion in the making of Creep Show with John Amplis, Tom Atkins, Tom Savini, and Marty Schiff. Uh, the comic book look, an interview with costume designer Barbara Anderson. Ripped from the pages, an interview with animator Rick Catazone. Uh, the Colors of Creepshow, a look at the restoration of Creepshow with director of photography Michael Gornick. Into the Mix, an interview with sound re-recordist Chris Jenkins. Mondo Macabre. Uh, is that really this Mondo Macabre? Or did I just say it? I don't know. I think they're just using the term Mondo Macabre. I don't think it's from the company. Yeah. Uh, it says a look at Mondo's various Creepshow posters with Mondo co-founder... Rob Jones and Mondo Gallery Events planner Josh Curry. Or maybe it is. Mm. I don't know. Well, collecting Creep Show. A look at some of the original props and collectibles from the film with corrector Dave Burian. Audio interviews with director of photography Michael Gornick, John a- actor John Amplis, property master Bruce Allen Miller, and makeup effects assistant Daryl Ferrucci. Tom Savini's behind the scene footage. Horrors Hallow Ground. A look at the original film locations hosted by Sean. Clark. I love those. Yeah, those are kind of cool. I like the the whole, the location ones. Uh, deleted scenes, theatrical trailers, TV spot, radio spots, still galleries, posters, lobby cards, and movie stills, and the still galleries, but with behind the scene photos, which I think I've seen a ton of those always. Like there is in those, they used to always be in Fangoria. Yeah, they always have those behind the scene ones. Yeah, so. that's a, that's a great Pretty release good. if you don't have Creep Show already. Yes, yes. Uh, next up from that's yeah, that's why where it's not our pick of the week because we 
own a couple of versions of it. But for you, it's your. Oh yeah, version. definitely. <laughs> Uh, next up from Powerhouse Films, we have Cold Eyes of Fear from 1971. Uh, one man's evening with a prostitute takes a turn for the worse when a pair of hardened criminals show up at the home of the man's uncle, a judge who unfairly convicted one of the criminals years before. Tensions mount as victims try to turn their captors against one another and save the judge's life as well as their own. Um, I My comment for this was, besides 70s in the dictionary, it says, just watch this. Yeah, really. It's this so is awesome. 70s. I mean, I mean my yeah. God, everything. This is like the most 70s movie I've ever seen. Yeah, they even have a budget David Copperfield. In they there really do. Reason. Yeah, I mean, it's just, that... I mean, it, it's it screams 70s. Uh, this yeah. one has a new 4K restoration from the original negative by Powerhouse Films. Audio commentary with critics and authors David Flint and Adrian J. Smith. Directing Fear, legendary director Enzo G. Castellari looks back at the production and his experience of working with the actors. An Italian in London, actor Gianni... Garco reflects on his role and considers the film's place within his career. The men in the editing room, assistant editor Gianfranco Amacucci recalls, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm still laughing when you said, Gian, you said Gianni Dark, Darko. It's almost like Donnie Darko. And I'm like <laughs> thinking, is that like, like a Stefan on an SNL would like say something? Uh, like recalls a creative collaboration. Lovely John. Oh, here's Lovely John. He's back. He's back. Lovely John on Ennio Marconi. The DJ and soundtrack enthusiast to sex dissects the film's experimental jazz score. Ooh. And Friendly Tim comments on it. Ooh, that might be a <laughs> yeah, good this, soundtrack to look this, for. Look at that. Lovely John and Friendly Tim are already collaborating, yeah. and he just conned Tim into buying his uh, purchase. Uh, original natural trailer, image gallery, promotional and publicity materials, limited edition exclusive 80-page book with a new essay by Roberto Curti, a career-spanning archival interview with director Enzo G. Castellari conducted by Mark Wickham, and archival interviews with actor Gianni Dark, Don, Donnie Darko, a new, inter- Donnie Darko. A new interview. He's Donnie Darko from now on. A new interview with Giovanni Raleigh. Archival news reports on the death of actor Frank Wolf. An overview of contemporary critical responses and full film critics. There's way too many names in there for me to yeah, parse that, that out. One. So uh, that's that one looks interesting. Yeah, this next one's a really cool one for the box alone. Oh, good I God! Look at the this. extras on this. We have to trade off on the extras on this one. Yeah, this has got a lot. But did you see the bo- the box? For yeah, this, it looks super cool. Impressive, but it's funny. There's not one film historian in this giant <clears throat> list, from what I see here. I don't think. But anyway, um, yeah. So this is Enter the Video Store, Empire of Screams from 1984 and 1989. And what this is is this box set by Arrow, um, kind of like their favorites of the video store age mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, and it's you know it, it, these are one boxes that if you probably went to video stores back in the eighties and you looked in the horror shelf you saw all of these always and you probably probably wondered you know you either probably you rented some probably you watched it on cable but either way you probably experienced something with all these movies um, and it's cool because in the box of like the Arrow Video Store it's like they really tried to complete and you'll see with some of the features they have they really tried to complete that that motif. Um, yeah, so maybe what I'll do is I'll read this first batch and then disc one, and then you can do disc two, and I'll do disc three, and okay, and so yeah. forth because it's yeah long. It's five movies in here. The five movies are, by the way, the Dungeon Master Dolls, Cellar Dweller, Arena, and Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks being probably the most common, yeah, that uh, mainstream one. But Dolls, as horror fans probably saw that. Dolls one is great. Yeah, I like yeah. that one. Uh, limit, and that's I think on streaming services a lot yeah. too. Um, so the it says limited edition packaging featuring newly commissioned artwork by Lori Greasley. Uh, reversible sleeves featuring originally newly commissioned artwork by Elon Sheedy. Not to be confused with Ali Sheedy. Uh, <laughs> Double sided posters for each film featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Elon Sheedy. Fifteen postcard size re- reproduction art cards. Arrow Video Store membership card. See that's cool. That's cool. And again there, um, eighty page perfect bound book featuring new writings on the films by Lee Gambin. Of course, he was a, a film historian, uh, but no longer <laughs> apparently. Um, Dave J. Megan Navarro. Oh, I've, we've seen her in a bunch of stuff. I think we follow her on Twitter too. She does a bunch of hard docs. Appears in there all the time. Uh, and John Harrison plus select archival material. The first one, disc one, is The Dungeon Master, and that has a new 2K reservation by Arrow Films from the original negative. Three different versions of the film, Seamless Branching, the U.S. theatrical version, the pre-release version, and the international version called Rage War. Mm. Uh, so that's good. you got three things, and the Seamless Branching is always good because it kind of just doesn't uh, – it's not like three separate f- films. It kind of just goes – you can pick which one, and it'll kind of veer off. It's kind of cool. A uh, new audio commentary with star Jeffrey Byron, moderated by film's critics, Matty Budrick. Boudrewicz? I don't know. Boudrewicz? I don't know how to spell his name. Uh, and Dave Wayne. Uh, I reject your reality and substitute my own. A new interview with star <laughs> Jeffrey Byron. Theatrical trailers, 
Image Gallery. And now Tim will take Disc 2. Disc 2 Dolls, a favorite of mine. Two, new 2K restoration by Aero Films from the original Interpositive. New audio commentary by David Decato, Empire alumnus and friend of Stuart Gordon. Archive audio commentary with director Stuart Gordon and writer Ed Naha. Archive audio commentary with cast members Carolyn Purdy Gordon, Stephen Lee, Carrie Lorraine, and Ian Patrick Williams. I will say they're a pretty good team. <laughs> Pretty good, pretty Gordon team. <laughs> pretty Gordon. Yeah, Assembling yeah. Dolls, a new interview with Lee Percy, editor of Dolls, Reanimator, and From Beyond. Toys of Terror, wow. the making of Dolls, an archive feature with Gordon, Yuzna, Purdy Gordon, Williams, Brian Yuzna, Charles Band, and Gabe Bartolos. Film to Storyboard Comparison, Theatrical Trailers, and Image Gallery. And next is Disc 3 for Cellar Dweller. And that is Additional Picture Restoration by Arrow Films, new audio commentary by special makeups effects artist Michael Deek, who inhabited the Cellar Dweller creature suit. Hmm. Uh, moderated by film critics Matty Bud- Why do I get this guy? <laughs> Matty Budrowitz and Dave Wayne. <laughs> Grabbed by the ghoulies, a new appreciation of John Carl Bickler. Oh, that, that's oh, yeah. cool that he's, he's cool. in there. Yeah, R.I.P. Uh, John Carl Bickler. I met him, uh, too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I met him at Mad Monster Party. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard he's really cool. He's very nice. Um Special makeup effects artist of many Empire Picture Films and director of Cellar Dweller by film critics Matty Budrowitz and Dave Wayne. Inside the Cellar, a new interview with special makeup effects artist Michael Deek. Original sales sheet. That's interesting. Uh, original production notes, VHS trailer, Empire Pictures reel trailer. Oh, sorry, trailer reel. <laughs> totally read that back. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, image galleries, including behind-the-scenes photos, courtesy of makeup a special makeup effects artist michael deke it's too many words it's too wordy yeah. these, these disc features. four is arena new 2k restoration by Aerofilms films from the last known surviving 35 millimeter elements new audio commentary with director peter manugian moderated by film critics matty butrowicz oh, this guy and dave wayne yeah, alternative got him. <laughs> alternative full frame presentation not his arena a new interview with co-screenwriter danny bilson Empire of Creatures, a new interview with special makeup effects artist Michael Deke, theatrical trailer, and image gallery. And finally, disc five is Robot Jocks. Uh, new 2K restoration by Arrow Films from the original negative archive audio commentary with director Stuart Gordon. Audio Archive audio commentary with... I'm, I'm like trying to skip through this so fast, I'm like skipping <laughs> words. It's terrible. Archive audio commentary with associate effects director Paul Gentry, mechanical effects artist Mark Rappaport, and stop motion animator Paul Jessel. Crash and Burn, a new interview with actor Gary Graham. Her name is Athena, a new interview with actor Anne-Marie Johnson. Scale of Battle, David Allen and the Effects of Robot Jocks, a new appreciation of the stop-motion animator David Allen by those who knew him, featuring contributions by fellow visual effects artist Steve Begg, <laughs> Yancey Calzita, Paul Gentry, Kevin Kuchever, Dennis Murin, and John Vincent. I met Dennis Murin before, by the way. Oh. At the, uh, speak, he spoke a thing when I was living, uh, going, uh, spoke at like a little, uh, I think it was just a, it was kind of like a Star Wars um kind of uh, thing at one of the museums was a little Star Wars yeah. exhibit and he was uh, one night he had, did a speaking thing so it was pretty cool he was re- very interesting to uh, listen to um, looking back an archival interview with actor Paul Coslow original sales sheet original production notes theatrical trailer image galleries including behind the scenes stills courtesy of associate effects art- uh, I'm going to say effects artist director director Paul Gentry uh, next up Oof. from well that was a doozy uh, next yeah. up from Wellgo USA, we have the tank from this year. In 1978, Oregon, Ben and Jules inherit an abandoned coastal property from Ben's late mother who's never mentioned it. The untouched house has been kept a secret for 40 years and comes with a beautiful private cove and beach. Jules searches for answers while Ben unwittingly awakens a fiercely protective creature. This one looks really cool. It does. looks really cool. I like this. Like, I, I like the whole vibe of it. Yeah. It looks- like it starts off very like... La, da, 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 and then just goes dark quickly in the trailer, and it really looks like a cool, great you know, monster. Yes, it's a, yeah, yeah, and it's a plot. Yes, you've probably seen it kind of done a million times, but something about this one looks just a unique little thing. Very like isolated, very small. Like it's, it's like just a, a small family. It's like a husband, a husband, a wife, and a, and a daughter, and that's it. It's not it doesn't look. Oh, and there might be a real estate agent, I guess, in there somewhere. They show, but. Uh, looks like a very like tight, yeah, small uh, scope, but it looks really good. Uh, has three extras here: a look into the tank featurette, a making the creature featurette, and an original trailer. Uh, the next one, oh, that's our pick of the week. So skipping here, uh, oh, I get a dud one. <laughs> uh, RLJ Entertainment: Tales of the Walking Dead, the complete first season, twenty twenty two, an episodic anthology that will follow individual characters from the Walking Dead TV universe with both old and new. 
or new and old. What was, was me reading everything backwards? I'm literally <laughs> skipping ahead and then realizing I've skipped a word and have to go backward uh, with new and old. Uh, probably because I really don't care about this title because I never, I know, sadly, have not got into The Walking Dead. Do plan to watch it at some point, but it's really this means nothing. I don't. Yeah, I don't like these spinoffs. I haven't watched any yeah. of the spinoffs. Um, next up from Severin Films, we have Alien from the Abyss from 1989. An environmental activist teams and a, and a reclusive snake farmer encounter a horrible new life form while attempting to expose a high-profile chemical company that's been dumping toxic sludge into an active volcano. The owners of the corrupt corporation thought that the jungle would be the perfect cover for their shady dealings, but nature is about to strike back. Just as the two fearless explorers uncover the evidence they need to bring the company down, a new life form born of magma and biohazardous yeah, magma. <laughs> biohazardous <Yeah>. material. <laughs> yeah, you, thanks to Mike Myers, we can never I say can't ever say ever magma again. normally anymore. And biohazardous material emerges to teach mankind the dangers of toying with Mother Nature. And I was picturing that whole thing read in Dr. Uh, Evil's voice. Um, I need to watch this to practice my German because the whole trailer was in German. And it was called Das Alien von... Uh, uh, God, Ken's going to kill me. The Tief? Yeah. Tief, I think, was German for deep. I, I gotta look know. it up. We, we need to we need to look ahead and then like have Ken come on and be like a guest reader. Yeah, I, I, I'm yeah, Tief. So das Alien von die Tief. Hopefully, I got the, the German's tough because all the nouns are either masculine, feminine, or neutral, and you have to just remember which one's which. It's very, yeah, to me, this just like like an eh. like I couldn't give give either way on it. Yeah, based on the trailer, this one has a brand new 4K restoration from the center of the earth interview with Eduardo Margariti. It has a delicious sounding. You gotta last do it name. like in. You gotta say it like in. Uh, remember, uh, in Glorious Bastards, Margarete. Margarete. Uh, the Outsider, the cinema of Antonio Margarete, uh, son of the Outsider, interviews with the <laughs> no, Outsider, no. <laughs> Outsider director Eduardo Margarete, and a trailer. Don't you love when the name is said, had to say three times in a row? Like, I, okay, of course, I give Brian the next uh, sex boob Yeah, what is movie. Tim, Tim planned this. He put this in this This order. is called Boobs uh, and Witchcraft. That's what I'm, I'm renaming yeah. it. Otherwise, but known to the masses as Powerhouse Films' Black Magic Rites from 1973. It says, Delirium director Renato Polselli delivers yet another delectable slice of cinematic sleaze. <laughs> I feel like that's like something like... Uh, Vincent Price would say, well, uh, with his sadomach- ma- yeah. sadomasochist shocker set in a gothic castle and culminating with the sacrifice of seven naked virgins <laughs> during a bloody satanic orgy. Lurid depictions of whippings, torture, and beatings abound in a truly diabolical tale of human inhumane cruelty starring Enzo. Oh, no, Euro. I thought it said Enzo. <laughs> Euro sleaze queen Rita Caller. That's a sad thing that she's known as that. <laughs> I was about to say, can you imagine being known as the Euro sleaze queen? It's like, you know, like, yeah, especially when there was like lovely John, yeah. friendly Tim, and <laughs> sleaze queen Rita Calderoni, uh, and pr- prolific actor bodybuilder Mickey Hartigay or Hargitay. I don't know who that is. Is she re- is he related to Marg? What's her Mar- Margarita Hargitay? Yeah. What's her no Mariska Hargitay? Mariska Hargitay. Yeah. Mariska Hargitay. Yeah. I don't know if she's related. Like anyway, as Tim said, boobs and witchcraft, and uh, at almost four minutes of trailer time, I still have no idea what's going on other than the aforementioned boobs and witchcraft. <laughs> uh, it's got a new 4K restoration of the film from the original negative by Powerhouse Films, audio commentary with critics and authors David Flint and Kim Newman, Se- and they just did this one, too, this year or so. Uh, seventh art according to Ralph Brown, and that's R-A-L-F, <laughs> Ralph, so it's like, Ralph. Uh, Far-reaching documentary on the first half of Renato Pulselli's career, featuring an archival interviews with the filmmaker and his actor collaborator Mickey Hargitay. Hargitay, I can't say that name. Hargitay, as well as new contributions from director programmer Luca Ri, uh, Gianfranco Reverberi. <laughs> Reverberi. It looks too uh, long. The Reverberries Gianfranco tastes Reverberi. like Reverberries. I know. What is with the fruit in this uh, this? <laughs> months uh anyway Gianf- gianfranco reverberi on black magic rights the composer revisits his haunting score oh Tim. Mm. but look at that that's so dark they didn't even want to go to lovely freaking John. lovely john's back again oh no he yeah, is he's back. back there he is I-, I was just joking but now they brought him back it says lovely john and gianfranco reverberi's uh the dj and the soundtrack enthusiast deconstructs the film's delirious composition well, now he's you know, an Reverberi- enthusiast he was a collector now he's an enthusiast M- maybe it's reverberary because he's like a musician oh guy. reverberary so maybe, yeah yeah maybe we've said it wrong i don't know wait the alternative reincarnation of isabel title sequence 
original theatrical trailer, image gallery, promotional and publicity materials, new and improved English translation subtitles, and a limited edition exclusive 80-page book with new essay by Miranda Corcoran, a career-spanning archival interview with director Renato Polselli by Jay Slater, an archival autobiograph- autobiographical piece by Polselli, and look at the career of actor Mickey Hargitay. <laughs> I said it right that time. I went really slow. An overview of contemporary critical responses and full film credits. All right. That's a doozy. Our last one before our pick of the week is from Shout Factory. And this is this one has been hard to get, uh, like like to track down. I've never even seen this one. I saw it. It was on VHS at one point. I remember seeing yeah. it when I, I rented it and was very disappointed. Yeah, this was not, not a uh, critically acclaimed entry. Or maybe I rented it on an original DVD. I can't remember. Back yeah. in 2006 DVDs were round, so it must have, maybe it must have been DVD. I don't know. Um, this is Shot Factory's release of Creepshow 3. Again, another bare bones disc. This follow-up to Stephen King and George A. Romero's 1982 horror anthology features five new tales of horror. Alice, The Radio, Call Girl, The Professor's Wife, and Haunted Dog. I've heard nothing but bad things about this. Um, I still need to see it for completion's sake since I haven't. Um, but uh, yeah, and I I, re- I remember like rent like I said renting it and being really disappointed because it didn't match the first two in really in tone or in in just in in quality and but yeah like the monolith is gonna need it because it's got creep show one and yeah. two on there and it needs creep show three and it's got the creep show TV series and all that jazz. So, but our pick of the week is a good one. At least. Yeah, this is a great uh, this, one. This is one of our all-time favorite movies. This is one of the first horror f- films that I used to watch repeatedly because it was always on the movie channel. And that was one that, uh, like, I mean, Kim and Ketz did this movie, uh, have done this. We've done it. It's an uh, all-time classic from the 80s, from 1980 specifically, and that is Motel Hell, this time in 4K, and it's from Shout Factory. So you know you're getting a good uh, edition. I have the original uh, one. Uh, so I probably won't double dip, but uh, if you don't have it, this is your chance to get an amazing movie and, uh, and all the special features. And Tim actually and I both in agreement after we were talking about this before, right before we started. This is one of those movies that seems to get better and you like it more every time you every see time it. Every time I watch it, I love it more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know what it's about, I don't know how by this point, if you're a horror fan, but Farmer Vincent kidnaps unsuspecting travelers and is burying them in his garden. Unfortunately for his victims, they are not dead. Um, it's all time classic. It's got an audio commentary with director Kevin Connor, moderated by Dave Parker. Interviews with Kevin Connor, producer writers Robert Jaffe and Stephen Charles Jaffe, actor Mark Silver, and stunt coordinator Gene Hartline. Interviews with actors Paul Link and Roseanne Caton. Ida Be Thy Name, a look back at Motel Hell's frightful female protagonist, Ida Smith, who was, was super weird and creepy, uh, especially in the 80s when you had a female protagonist like that. Mm-hmm. Was a, a, the 80s seemed to be, actually, if you think of also Friday the 13th, the original female protagonists were not, uh, you know, they were just really coming around, like, to be at that level. Um, and, I mean, she's goofy, not, like, cr- super, like, really horrifying scary she's just creepy scary like deranged like okay i don't really want to be around her by myself yeah because <laughs> we don't know what she'll do uh, especially you don't want to be with her in a tub in the water no. a tube in the water sorry uh theatrical trailer uh but so it's really not that many special features but i mean it's one of these ones that really it has a just enough special features still to be worth the disc anyway because it's such a great movie yeah that that's a great one that's one of the first uh shop factory collector's editions that i ever bought uh, even though it doesn't have a lot of extras i just wanted the movie do you know what is would be an, and it's probably too old and too obscure to ever become one but it would make an amazing haunt a walk through haunt this movie can you imagine how good that would be yeah that would be super cool that's that's a good idea I, but i don't think a lot of people I mean, know enough that's know what i'm saying movie. it's like it, it's a little too obscure yeah. you need a really big heart like how only horror nights might be able to pull it off because people would think know, it was but, just an original they wouldn't even realize it yeah they, they they wouldn't know so it would hit on both things the, the, the hardcore horror fans would love it and the the newbies would think it was oh what a great idea this is but i mean just think about it. you can walk through you know you walk through the beginning you enter through farmer vincent's hotel shop everything's nice you know maybe ida like an ida pops out or something and then it just gets weird crazy you end up wandering out into that field where they have the uh like um you know the people buried in the heads yeah. and, you know the oh heads you could be so popping easily up do that too. yeah you can even have that like the tractor come in and the light you know how it pulls them out and the lights come on there's a lot of cool like jump scare kind of effects it could do of course you know it then culminates at the end where you know he comes out with the pig's mask on and stuff it'd just be really cool and and they could even tie it in and sell like a, a, a themed beef jerky <laughs> to it you know i mean 
it'd be great. Oh, it's just like a, just a, that'd be so awesome. That would be super but cool. Yeah. Sadly, Universal will never do yeah. that. I don't blame them. I mean, they they try and go for something people know about. Yeah, it. yeah. Well, to re- and plus, in all honesty, how many how many haunts have we seen with like a, that meat market theme? That kind oh of, like, yeah, just, people. That's like I said. People good. think it was just original. Not yeah. Um, to recap, our week of June twenty seventh, we had Evil Dead Rise four K. Creep Show 4K, which is a uh, 4K re- remaster, but it's the same extras as the uh, other Shot Factory discs. Uh, Cold Eyes of Fear from 1971. Arrow box set. Enter the video store Empire of Screams, which is a great uh, box set of old VHS classics. The Tank from 2023. Tales of the Walking Dead, the complete first season from last year. Alien from the Abyss from 1989. Black Magic Rights from 1973. Creep Show 3 from 2006. And our pick of the week. Shout Factory's re-release of Motel Hell 4K. So that's it for June. And we will be back soon enough with July. This year's just kind of flying by. Yeah, it really is going by way too fast. Too much stuff going on and it like just it you know, but the, the, we're trying to like at least we're, we're back on track now with the podcast. We're about to go to the one of our favorite times of year with the summer vacation, and then before you know it, we'll be doing our, our yearly horror challenge again. We'll be back in haunt and- season, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, who, you know, oh my god, it's, 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 it, it, the one thing is, it's like funny, summer is so fun, I love summer, but like, I think like, it's like funny, once it goes, and we get, as we get closer to fall, it's like, I'm like in this torn thing, because I'm like, I love the summer, the weather, all the theme parks, and everything's all stuff, but now it's like, I love the fall, and the cool, crisp air, and, yeah, you know, the, the, the horror movie, the fun, the candies that come out, the pumpkin spice season which tim and i if you haven't known are big fans of <laughs> <laughs> yes i can't wait um, but uh yeah so we're always excited about that so yeah lots of fun stuff coming up uh and our summer slaycation uh i'm not gonna say it now because we're gonna but you if you've listened to our for episode that released yesterday you'll know the the um the thrill and we, and we apologize uh again We'll apologize probably on the show when we announce it, but apologize again to poor David McHugh, <laughs> known as the horror mailman on Twitter, <laughs> who we've been just tormenting him with our little teases. Yes, those have been but, fun. Uh, it's fun. All right, guys, we'll see you back here next month for our July December month. Take care. See ya. See ya.